Ariel Hawani at the UFC 127 pre-fight press conference in Sydney, Australia, alongside Marshall Zelaznik, the UFC's managing director of international development. See that? That's Impressive. A mouthful. That is a mouthful. Well done. One of your many titles, and of course, you are here uh, for this very big fight week in Sydney. The second time the UFC has come to Sydney. Compare the buzz for this event to the first one last February. Well, I think the, the big difference between this and the last event is, I'm um, as you can see, the media that's here that's been a real big uptake. You know, we've been very fortunate with the media here. They've given us a fair shake. They've respond, They've re treated this, the product like a sport. Um, and so it's continuing to grow. Obviously, we sold tickets very fast the first time. We sold them even quicker this time. Um, I think, you know, the we're getting a little more savvy about how to promote these events a little bit and get our fighters out to the fans who are doing signings around Australia. Um, and I think that's really helping us. So it just feels like we're going from strength to strength from here. It was great the first time and it's better the second time. You mentioned uh, the media coverage. Do you feel as though the, the mainstream media here is a little more educated this time around than the first time you came? Yeah, I believe so. I think that's part of the process when we go to a new territory is having that dialogue. And I think what helps is these fighters. I mean, you can see they are, you know, they're so articulate and they're so passionate and it comes across. And so when the media begins to interact with them, you know, I think that's what really starts to move the ball for us on this stuff. And so they continue to do it. I mean, we've got a bunch of TV cameras here, which is great. So we've got, you know, proper, you know, mainstream media who's uh, covering the sport. How many fans are you expecting on uh, Sunday afternoon? So I think the capacity is about 18,000. It's roughly it's right around there. And I think that we'll be right at that capacity. Obviously, we've sold out. Um, we have sponsored tickets and things like that that we have to give out. But I expect it to be absolutely full. And I expect it to be full early. As I mentioned, second time in Australia, um, the first one, UFC 110, last February. Will this be sort of a, a yearly February event for you guys because it does so well in the summertime here? Uh, it could be for sure. You know, I think that when you look at other sports and they have a circuit in a series, I think it would be you know great to try and manage to do that. It's difficult because everything's so organic in the company and how we operate. But realistically, we could be doing two events here a year. The benefit here is that our events are live in the U.S. at the same time as if they're um, happening in the U.S. And that's very important for us for obviously the revenue uh, issues that with pay-per-view. So that's why this market can be a two-time-a-year market. And do you think you guys uh, could sell at a market like? Like this without guys like Sotteropoulos and Kyle Noak on the card? Yeah, 100%. I think um, we learned in the UK and other places that what happens, people are watching on television the sport and they're watching fighters and they get their favorite fighters and inevitably they want to see the guys they've seen on television. So whether they're locals um, or not, they're going to come to the event. The locals are important. Um, because it, it really engages the local media. Um, it's sort of the, the hook to get them. Um, the great news is these are really great fighters as well, so you, you, know, you have it both ways. The black eye on Australia in terms of MMA is the situation in Victoria. We spoke to George Sotteropoulos, who was from there yesterday, um, explaining to us that you can have MMA events, just not in a cage. Seems very bizarre. Um, what are you guys doing to try to clean up the situation there? Well, I'm actually on a plane after I leave here. We're going to Melbourne, meeting with some of the officials there. Um, look, we're working on trying to educate them. It, it is a little um, uh, incredible that you can participate in the sport, but you can't do it in a cage when we believe and most people believe that a cage is the safest environment for the fighters. And um, any official who's concerned with fighter safety um, ought to be putting these cages in to make sure that you know something unfortunate doesn't happen in the, um, in the octagon. So we're, we're meeting with officials. We hope to have some progress on that. We know we have a lot of support there, um, but we just got to get in front of the right people and push it. And from what I've learned from being here, Melbourne is a very big sports town um, or, or city. Um, any uh, potential opportunities there? I'm not very familiar with their arena situation, but of bringing an event to Melbourne as opposed to Sydney. Yeah, well, Melbourne and Sydney are the two the two spots here where most people go. Melbourne is consistently rated the number one sports city in the world. They have great facilities. Um, they have the Rod Laver Arena, it's about 13,000, but they also have an outdoor stadium. And based on what happened in Toronto and based on how the fans react here, I mean, it could be something that we you know really strongly consider as a stadium in Melbourne at the right time. Look, Queensland, which is just, I don't know, a couple hours from here, is another place that the venues are a little bit small, but I feel like we could do an event, you know, four times a year here and we'd do okay. I want to ask you about uh, one of the fights in particular on the card, Michael Bisping versus Jorge Rivera. You're around Bisping a lot because you are based in the UK and, and you've worked with him for many years. Um, he is very mature in, in sort of his responses and, and, and he's not, he's kind of biting his tongue when he's talking about, but you could see it has bothered him a bit. And I think this shows the evolution of Michael Bisping in a sense, because maybe three or four years ago, he probably would have come back a lot stronger. Are you surprised with the way he's dealing with all this? 
Um, I guess in some ways, you know, I think he's definitely been affected by this. I don't know what impact that will have on his fighting style. I think he's saying that it makes him more focused and makes him train harder. Um, and that's a scary proposition for anyone, you know, a really trained up MMA fighter and someone of Bisping's caliber. Um, but to your question, I don't know that I'm that surprised because I know Michael very well. And, you know, sometimes he gets, you know, he goes off on a tangent um, and other times he doesn't. So, no, I think that you know, he definitely has more reflection now on, you know, his career and where he's going and he seems to be more focused he's you know on the verge here he wins, puts another couple fights together and I think he's going to be making a strong case for a title shot and as always when we talk to you we always get the fans asking us you know, ask Marshall when are they coming back to Ireland when are they going to Scotland when are they coming back to the UK so let's hit you off with a good and they're gonna be very happy just to hear you answer because they think Dana's ignoring them to be quite <laughs> honest they, they almost take this personally Ireland the fans are dying Yes. When are you guys coming back to Ireland? So, I don't know. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> but we are holding dates in Ireland. Um, it is something... In 2011? In 2011, yeah. We've got dates. I think we're holding dates in June and October. Um, and I'm in touch with the venue there all the time. Uh, and I'm actually flying from here after this event, going back to Vegas. We're all going to sit in our, our meeting and start planning out the, the second half of the year. So um, Ireland will be on that list. Scotland will be on that list. The UK is obviously on that list. Uh, the UK could happen as early as June. Um, this meeting next week is very important to kind of shake all that out. A few months ago, Dana talked about a potential fight night in Scotland in May. Is that still on the table? No, not for May, no, but, um, but it could be June. Uh, the problem with Scotland is the venues are small, you know, they're, so far. They're building a new one now, but be a year away. But I think, you know, Scotland, we know the fans are there. The closest we can get really is Newcastle. That's about a 9,000-seat arena. Um, so that may be a good option for us. But, look, we want to be there. We want to be everywhere. Right. How about London, Manchester? You're saying June would probably be uh, a good target date for England? Yeah, exactly. We're holding dates at, at Manchester in June. Um, Liverpool is a place we want to be. We're holding dates there. Um, this is a tricky game on trying to get these dates to work with our calendar, with the US TV calendar. Uh, but we are as motivated as we've ever been to bring these events to the UK and the rest of Europe. And how about Abu Dhabi? We thought there was going to be an event in, in March. Obviously not happening. Will you return to Abu Dhabi in 2011? I think so. You know, the um, our partner there, Flash. You know, I just my phone rang this morning. Um, sorry, I didn't call you, John, <laughs> um, but I will call you back. Um, we're talking with them again about trying to organize something. So I'm going to see what's on his mind and try and get something done. We want to be there as well. I'm, I'm telling you, it's that answer. You can just plug into every one of these questions. We want to be everywhere, and there will be a time where we'll be doing, you know, potentially a fight a weekend. I mean, that could happen one day. Did we miss any countries? You want to break any news for us? France? Uh, I don't know. Somewhere. Uh, the, the big news I think is we. Uh, I was just down in Rio, and it was just on the heels of the uh, Belfort Anderson fight, and everybody I spoke to said it felt bigger in Brazil than World Cup. Really? Everybody was in bars, were in their homes, watching at four in the morning. I think that fight, and talking to our media partners there. I mean, it is going to challenge and rival every other market in the world. Brazil is going to be massive. When do those tickets go on sale? Do you know? Um, I think we're trying to get those on sale in May, early May. All right. Yeah, it's well, going to be big. A lot of people looking forward to that. A lot of people looking forward to UFC 127. It goes down Sunday afternoon here in Sydney, Australia at the Ace Arena. John Fitch going up against BJ Penn and Jorge Rivera going up against Michael Bisping. Live on pay-per-view in the United States, same time as always. Important to remember. Yes, thank you for doing that. appreciate right. it. Thank you so much for the time, Marshall. Always a pleasure. Uh, my pleasure is mine. Thank you.